It was the year 1795. A boy named Daniel McGuinness was exploring the lush forests and sandy beaches of Oak Island in Nova Scotia, Canada. As he walked along, he noticed a strange depression in the ground. With a sense of adventure in his heart, he decided to investigate the depression further. As he got closer, he saw that the depression was filled with dirt and a few scraps of timber. McGuinness couldn't help but wonder what lay beneath the round dent in the ground. So, he gathered his friends, Anthony Vaughn and John Smith, and they began to dig. After several feet of digging, they found a layer of flagstones covering what appeared to be a shaft although they weren't quite sure what they were looking at. This discovery excited the boys, and they worked tirelessly to uncover the mystery of Oak Island. They soon discovered that the shaft was man-made, rather than a natural formation. Wondering what could be down there, they began to descend into it. However, they soon realized there was water in the shaft, and it was too deep for them to continue. Despite this setback, McGuinness was determined to find out what lay beneath the surface of the island. So, he returned to the mainland and shared his story with a group of treasure hunters. Intrigued by his tale, they set out to investigate the site and discovered a wooden platform at the bottom of the shaft, with markings and other signs of human activity. They decided to dig deeper. At about 10 meters down, they had to stop. It was the depth of about a three stories building at that point, and it was getting too deep and too unsafe for them to continue. Although there was some reluctance, they had to abandon their mission. It was a difficult decision to make because they knew something was down there. Who would dig such a deep hole three stories down on a small island of nothing? There has to be something valuable that someone was trying to hide. After all, Digging such a hole would require a lot of manpower, time, and dedication. McGuinness didn't just decide to continue digging the hole for no reason. No, he had good reasons why he wanted to dig so deep before giving up. You see, the area used to be a frequented spot by pirates, and it just so happens that a pirate named Captain Kidd was rumored to have buried two million pounds of treasure somewhere to the east of Boston. Guess where Oak Island was located? the east of Boston. News of the discovery soon spread, and a flurry of treasure hunting expeditions began on the island. In the year 1802, a few years after the discovery was first made, a group of 30 men arrived on Oak Island, Nova Scotia, forming what became known as the Anso Group. Their mission was to solve the mystery of the supposed treasure that had been discovered on the island by Daniel McGuinness and his friends several years earlier. The Anso group was led by Anthony Vaughn, one of the original treasure hunters who had accompanied McGuinness. With their arrival, the men immediately set to work, excavating the original pit and digging several additional shafts in the hopes of finding the treasure. The Anso group's efforts proved to be more ambitious than those who came before them. They even used a unique drill designed to dig through the layers of soil and rock, which they hoped would lead them to the treasure. There was a layer of logs for every 10 feet they dug. At a depth of 40 feet, the platform was covered with charcoal. 50 feet down there was a thick layer of putty, as if someone had tried to waterproof it. At around 60 feet they discovered pieces of seaweed and non-Nova Scotian coconut fiber, and at 70 feet, they found layers of hand-cut planks. At a depth of 90 feet, Onslow's men found an olive-colored slab with strange ciphers written on the back of the stone. Some believe the text could be translated to say, 40 feet below, 2 million pounds are buried. But others disagree. Amazingly, the money pit was flooded with 60 feet of water the next morning, because they had removed the slab of stone. After the crew failed to get water out of the shaft, the Onslow company ran out of money and abandoned the treasure hunt. In the end, the group dug to a depth of approximately 27 meters, which was a pretty good accomplishment. It would be another 47 years before another serious attempt at uncovering the treasure of Oak Island. This group of men encountered the same issues the previous treasure hunters did years earlier. The money pit would be filled with water, stopping their search in the middle. However, this group of men realized that the water in the pit was salty. Realizing it was seawater, the men did a quick search around the shore of the island and discovered a narrow channel that went in the direction of the money pit. The channel disappeared a few meters in. 
it dawned on them that the money pit was booby-trapped. This discovery only fueled the group because why would anyone go to such lengths to protect nothing of value? Captain Kidd must have hidden something of tremendous value under there. Multiple shafts were dug, however, the shafts would either be flooded with seawater or collapse, due to unstable walls. Eventually, the group had to abandon the mission like those before them. In the 170 years since then, there were even more attempts made by different companies and individuals alike to discover what was at the bottom of the money pit. Some brought huge machinery, and some brought their own divers. But the end result was the same, they all had to return home. One of the groups that arrived on Oak Island was called the Old Gold Salvage Group, and one of their members was a would-be lawyer, and eventually, President of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Years after the involvement, he was still hoping to return someday. In fact, in 1939, Roosevelt had planned to return to Oak Island for another dig, this time, with a lot more funding and help. However, World War II broke out and he was unable to revisit Oak Island before his death. Nobody knows what Captain Kidd had buried if he did bury any treasures but some jewelry has been found. Here are some examples of jewelry that have been found on Oak Island. A brooch. One of the most important gems found on Oak Island is a small brooch discovered during a 1965 treasure hunt. The brooch is made of gold and features a unique design, leading some researchers to speculate that it may be of French origin. A gold chain. In the early 1900s, a gold chain was found on the island. Some researchers believe he was left behind by one of the early treasure hunters. The necklace he is believed to date from the 17th or 18th century and is one of the few examples of genuine jewelry found on Oak Island. These and other discoveries add to the mystery and intrigue surrounding the legend of Oak Island and its hidden treasures. It is unknown if these items are directly related to the money pit and the legendary treasure said to be buried there. In addition to jewelry, some old coins have also been found in the money pit but not in large quantities to indicate a hoard of treasures that Captain Kidd may have deliberately left behind. In the early 1900s, a Spanish silver coin known as a pistarine was discovered on the island by treasure hunter Robert Dunfield. The coin is believed to date back to the 1600s or 1700s. In 1931, another treasure hunter named Gilbert Hedden found a small copper coin on the island that was later identified as a Portuguese coin from the 1600s. The coin is believed to have been used as a form of currency in the New World during the colonial era. During a 1970s excavation of the island, treasure hunter Dan Blankenship found a French coin that has been dated to the early 1700s. The coin is made of copper and features the image of King Louis XV. Over the years, there have been rumors that Oak Island is cursed because past expeditions to the island did not result in all safe returns. The search for the treasure on Oak Island has been plagued by accidents, injuries, and even deaths. For example, in August 1965, a group of treasure hunters, led by Robert Restall, was working in the money pit, when a sudden release of gas caused them to lose consciousness. Despite the efforts of rescue teams, Restall and three others died in the pit. The tragedy was a devastating blow to the Oak Island community, and it raised serious questions about the safety of the search for the island's treasure. In total, at least six lives have been lost on Oak Island. Most of them died in the money pit. Some believe that these tragedies are a result of a curse, and that anyone who attempts to dig for the treasure is putting their life in danger. The curse extends beyond deaths. In the 1860s, a group of investors who called themselves the Oak Island Association took over the search. Numerous boreholes were drilled by them and they conducted several excavations, however, their attempt was fruitless. Eventually, they called off the search due to financial difficulties. Sadly, many investors went bankrupt. In the 1890s, another company called the Oak Island Treasure Company was formed. They invested heavily in equipment and manpower including steam-powered pumps to remove water from wells. However, despite their efforts, the company went bankrupt. In recent years, treasure hunts have continued on Oak Island with the help of TV shows and investors. However, 
The cost of excavating and drilling the island remains high, and many of those involved in the search face financial difficulties as a result. The curse of Oak Island's money pit is not just a legend, but a real-life curse that has left many in financial ruin. Despite the risks and costs associated with the search, the lure of the treasure continues to attract those who are willing to take the chance, hoping that one day they will find the elusive treasure and put an end to the curse. After so many unsuccessful attempts, many have begun to wonder if there were actually any treasures buried at Oak Island at all. A lot of stuff found in the money pit cannot be tracked down. This includes the tablet that was supposedly found in the money pit, with a mysterious inscription on top, guiding the treasure hunters to the treasures. That piece of stone would be an important clue that could reveal whether there were ever any treasures to be discovered in the first place. It could be sitting in someone's garage or private collection, but it could be just as likely that it never existed. One theory is that the money pit may have been created as a decoy to distract people from the real treasure, which could be located elsewhere on the island or even on another island. Some speculate that the pit may have been used to store pirate loot temporarily or as a way to mislead authorities trying to track down the real treasure. Others believe that the supposed treasure may have been discovered and removed a long time ago, and that subsequent search efforts have been futile. For example, some argue that the early treasure hunters may have already found the treasure, but kept it a secret, while others speculate that it was taken by pirates or other treasure hunters at some point. Despite these speculations, some remain convinced that there was something at the bottom of the money pit, and they aren't afraid to continue the search. While the search has not yet yielded any significant discoveries, the mystery and intrigue surrounding the money pit continue to attract people from all over the world, eager to solve one of history's greatest unsolved mysteries. Thank you for making it until the end.